Many managers have had the honour of winning either the World Cup or Champions League, but only one manager has the honour of winning both. The name of this man is Marcello Lippi. The Italian manager has won the game's most stacked trophy cabinets and has won the greatest that football has ever seen. This is a story of Marcello Lippi, El Mister. Marcello Lippi was born in Tuscany on the 12th of April 1948 and began his career with local side Fire Reggio. He would join the senior side of Sampdoria in 1969 and would spend 10 years there playing as a sweeper. He also had spells at Savona, Pistoise and Lucchese before hanging up his boots in 1982. He would begin his coaching career with Sampdoria's youth academy and climbed his way up the divisions as a manager before getting his first top flight job with Sassena. He would be something of a journeyman in the early years of his career, also having spells at Lucchese and Atalanta, but his lucky break would come in the sky blue of Naples. Lippi took charge of Napoli in 1993, with the club struggling in the aftermath of the departure of Diego Maradona. However, he was able to steady the ship, focusing on the team ethos and the idea that a team was like a car, all parts had to be working to move forward. Against the odds, he led Napoli to UEFA Cup qualification. And during a game against Juventus, club president Vittorio Chiusana decided Lippi was his man. Lippi had big shoes to fill, as he was replacing the legendary Giovanni Trapattoni, who guided Juventus to her first ever European Cup in 1985. Lippi, however, proved he was the right man for the job. He brought in reinforcements such as centre-back Chiro Ferreira from Napoli, as well as midfielders Didier Deschamps and Paolo Sosa. His philosophy was based on an organised and disciplined defence and freedom for the attackers. Other key players in his team included Antonio Conte, Alessandro Del Piero, Gianluca Vialli, Fabrizio Ravanelli and captain Roberto Baggio. With this team, Lippi's success would be instant. Juventus won their first league title in nine years in 1995, dedicating the victory to defender Andrea Fortuna, who lost his life to complications and leukaemia during the season. Juventus also reached the UEFA Cup final, but lost to Parma. However, they would get the revenge in the Coppa Italia final, defeating Parma 3-0 on aggregate. Juventus had set the league alight, having recently underachieved and possessing a seemingly ageing squad, but 30 goals from Ravanelli and 22 from Viali showed there was life in the old lady. Lippi had guided him to great success, with his emphasis on chemistry, and the idea that each player must play for the team and not themselves as well as his ability to change formation to suit the players at his disposal. 1996 would see them fail to retain their title as they finished second, but on the 22nd of May 1996, they had one of the biggest days in their history. Juventus travelled to Rome for the Champions League final, having defeated Real Madrid and Nantes in the knockout round, and who had faced the holders in Louis van Gaal's Ajax. It was a battle for the ages. Lippi focused on stunting Van Gaal's system by basing his game on high pressing and pace, and he took the lead early on through Ravanelli. Yari Lippmanen would level the score to the Dutch, and the game creeped into extra time and then penalties. However, the stoic Lippi was unfazed, keen not to overload his players of information, and it is said he often did not speak much because he was always thinking. He kept his head, and so did his players during the shootout. Edgar Davids and Jan Seeloy would miss their penalties for Ajax, whilst Juventus scored all four of theirs to win the tournament for a second time. In only two years, Marcello Lippi had turned Juventus into Italian and then European champions, in a truly remarkable feat, and he was not done there. Juventus made further reinforcements, bringing in Christian Vieri and most importantly, midfielder Zinedine Zidane. The reinforcements would help them take back the Scudetto, and it was also a chance to retain their European crown. Juventus faced Borussia Dortmund in Munich for the 1997 Champions League final. Naturally, the old lady were the favourites, but it would end up being a night to remember for the German side. Borussia Dortmund won the game by three goals to one, meaning Juventus surrendered their crown in a surprise upset. Libby's side hoped for redemption the next year. The signings of Edgar Davids and Filippo Inzaghi saw Juventus repeat the trick and retain their league title and they would also be in the Champions League final again. However, this time they were defeated by Jupp Heinkes' Real Madrid. The next season would see Juventus struggle, with Zinedine Zidane being plagued by injury, along with Alessandro Del Piero, 
who had netted 32 goals the previous campaign. During the season, Lippi controversially announced he would be leaving at the end of the campaign to join Juventus' arch-rivals Inter. The poor form saw Lippi that go early. Having led Juventus to three league titles, a Coppa Italia and the Champions League, it was a bit of way to say goodbye. His time at Inter was a disappointment. Whilst he led the side to a fourth place finish and a Coppa Italia final in his first season, the second campaign started terribly, as they were knocked out of the qualifying round to the Champions League by Swedish side Helsingborgs, and after a defeat to Regina, Lippi was let go. He had returned to Juventus after the departure of Carlo Ancelotti, and was hoping to make amends with the Turin faithful. After the departure of Zidane to Real Madrid for world record fee, Reinforcements are purchased in the form of goalkeeper Gianluigi Buffon, along with Lillian Thuram and Pavel Medved. Once again, Lippi would start as he meant to go on. Juventus returned to the top, winning the league again, and also reached the Coppa Italia final. They retained the league the next season, with their star man Pavel Medved winning that year's Ballon d'Or. For the fourth time, he would guide Juve to a Champions League final, this time facing AC Milan at Old Trafford. A poor final, though, would finish 0 0, and this time, it would be they who blundered at the spot. AC Milan won the shootout 3-2. Lippi would not have another chance to regain his European crown. After finishing third the next season, Lippi would depart for a second time to take over the Italian national team. Despite the roaring success of Italian club football from the late 1980s to the early 2000s, the Azzurri had disappointed on the international stage, losing in the finals of the 1994 World Cup and Euro 2000. After crashing out of the group stages of Euro 2004, hopes were low. However, with Lippi in charge, people were optimistic that Italy could win their first trophy since 1982. A strong qualifying campaign saw them book their ticket to the 2006 World Cup with relative ease. Lippi built his team around the creativity of both Francesco Totti and Andrea Perlo, and he also gained praise for his ability to rotate. Having six strikers in the form of Filippo Inzaghi, Alessandro Del Piero, Luca Toni, Francesco Totti, Alberto Gildarino, and Vincenzo Iaquinta may seem like a selection headache to many, but Lippi knew how to chop and change. He also had hard workers in midfield in the forms of Daniele De Rossi and Gennaro Gattuso, and with the likes of Fabio Cannavaro, Marco Matarazzi, and Gianluigi Buffon in their team, they had a strong spine. Golson Perlo and Iaquinta opened their campaign with a 2 0 victory over Ghana, which was followed by a 1 1 draw with the USA. A 2 0 win over the Czech Republic saw them through to the knockout rounds. Australia put up a strong fight, but a penalty from Totti, deep into stoppage time, sent the Italians through, and a comfortable 3 0 victory over Ukraine sealed their spot in the last four, where they faced host Germany. The game was tight as Germany looked for the opportunity to play in a final on home turf, but Buffon was unbeatable. It would end with a few minutes of Italian magic. In the 119th minute, Andrea Perlo had the ball on the edge of the box and threaded it through the eye of a needle to Fabio Grosso. The left back hit it first time and it flew beyond Jens Lehmann and curled into the corner. The Italians went wild as they were on the verge of a date of destiny. Germany desperately tried to equalise but lost the ball in the Italian half and Lippi's side broke. Del Piero curling an incredible shot into the top corner. Italy were in the final. They would face France. It would be a huge game, with Lippi facing off against Zinedine Zidane, a man's career who he had helped make. The game kicked off, and within seven minutes, the deadlock was broken. Marco Materazzi was judged to foul Florent Maluda in the box, and so France were awarded a penalty. Zidane had the audacity to pull off a Panenka, which bounced off the underside of the bar and cross the line. Matarazzi would redeem himself though, heading his side level 12 minutes later. Luca Toni would hit the bar before the sides went in level at half time. Toni would have further misfortune, having a goal disallowed, and with the deadlock unable to be broken, extra time was required. Buffon made an incredible save to deny Zidane, and soon Matarazzi would take centre stage again. He was involved in a conversation with Zidane Zidane, during which the French midfielder jokingly said he would give the defender his shirt later. In response, Matarazzi said he would prefer to have Zidane's sister. Zidane headbutted Matarazzi and was shown a red card for violent conduct. With France losing their star man, it was advantage Italy. The game would enter a penalty shootout. Both sides netted their first kicks, but David Trezeguet, who scored the winner against Italy in the Euro 2000 final, missed his. Both sides continued to net, 
before the decisive moment. Fabio Grosso would step up for Italy's fifth penalty. If he scored, they would be world champions, and he did not disappoint. Fabio Grosso, with the world watching, blasted it into the top corner. For the fourth time, and the first time in 24 years, Italy were champions of the world. In the celebrations, even the normally stoic Lippi could be seen smiling. Marcello Lippi had been a European champion and was now a world champion. He had ended years of disappointment for the Italians on the international stage. With the World Cup, an achievement he could not eclipse, Lippi made the decision to depart as manager of Italy. He would return though two years later, overseeing a disappointing campaign that saw him crash out of the 2010 World Cup at the group stage. Afterwards, he made the long journey to China, taking over at Gansau Evergrande. Success would follow him to Asia, as he won three Chinese Super League titles, a Chinese FA Cup, and the Asian Champions League. He would have two spells in charge of China before he retired from coaching. Marcello Lippi is about question one of the greatest managers of all time. Yet his name is often overlooked in debates of the greatest, which is an insult to his legacy. Out of all the coaches in the debate, no other can boast both a Champions League and World Cup as a manager. He turned weary Juventus and Italy sides into giants, with his incredible ability to quickly build teams and get the best out of players. His trophy collection speaks for itself, and there are few in the game as incredible as the coach with the cigar.